Hello and welcome to my channel. We have been discussing about the importance of sanitation and hygiene in the catering industry and the correlation between water, sanitation and health. Now, when we talk about health, we cannot skip the role of nutrients and nutrition as such. So in this video, we'll have a quick look at the global scenario of malnutrition. Now, when we say malnutrition, it is essentially the state, the pathological state which occurs due to relative deficiency or absolute deficiency of one or more nutrients. It is, you know, it can include undernutrition, it can include overnutrition and being overweight or having obesity. It can relate to the non-communicable diseases that are associated with the diet. It mainly is seen affecting the children, the pregnant women or the lactating mothers and the old people. But then, Malnutrition is something that is rampant even amongst the adult population. Now, adult males and females are having undernourished foods or poorly nourished foods due to a lot of factors. And we'll be looking at what this malnutrition is. Now, malnutrition is basically an imbalance. Like I said, it is happening due to deficiency, but it, it can be too much of a particular nutrient. So basically, it is happening due to imbalance that occurs when there is non-optimal eating of food. When we say non-optimal eating, it could be the quantity of food that is being eaten or the quality of food that is being eaten, which is causing the imbalance. And this eventually causes a lot of disastrous effects, which we'll look at in the next slide. But there are two major types of malnutrition, primary and secondary. Primary malnutrition is the one that occurs due to non-availability of a food. When a particular food is not available to the population, to the person, to the individuals, it could be due to poverty, it could be due to uh, the very high birth rate in a particular population, it could be due to illiteracy or poor lactation, it might be due to the uh, food um, you know, prohibition in a particular region, due to increased number of maternal deaths, due to which the children are not breastfed. So, these are the various reasons why a particular food is not available and that is what causes the malnutrition. If that's the case, then we are talking at or looking at the primary malnutrition. On the other hand, secondary malnutrition is when the food is available but then the body is unable to assemble it or you know assimilate it. Now, when the assimilation does not occur, it could be due to malabsorption, it could be the secondary effect of a particular infection or it could be due to a metabolic disorder. That is what we call as the secondary malnutrition. Either way, whether it is primary or secondary, it has a lot of negative cascade effects. The first effect is that malnutrition in a person leads to increased frequency and increased severity of a disease. So a disease which would uh, like a common infection, which may not have caused so much of problem in an individual who is healthy, leads to a lot of problems in a person who is malnourished. It can even lead to risk of dying or there, there will be delayed recovery because the disease which was very um, normal or which was very, you know, not so risky in a healthy individual now becomes a health risk. So increased frequency, increased severity of a disease, of a common cold, of a common infection is one of the effects. The second effect is it leads to a lot of lifestyle disorders or non-communicable diseases. It can cause wasting in the individual. It can be shown in the form of obesity. The person gets anemic. The person shows stunted. It, stunting is usually seen in children. So the child shows uh, stunted growth. These are some of the effects that can be seen in a child or in a person, in an individual who is malnourished. So let us look at some of the major effects of malnutrition or some of the major indicators of malnutrition. Though we have progressed globally in our technology and the economic stability, there are many, many children across the world who are either stunted or wasted or overweight. Stunting is in very simple terms, the low height for age. So when a child is too short for their height, for their age, I'm sorry, when a, a child's height is much lesser, than what should be for their particular age, what is the average for their particular age, that is what we call as stunting. It occurs as a result of chronic or you know recurrent undernutrition. Usually it is associated with poverty or poor maternal health or poor maternal nutrition, frequent illnesses in that population, inappropriate feeding, breastfeeding doesn't happen, too many children are there, the mother is not able to breastfeed a child properly, 
or improper care is uh, you know in the early life of the child all of these are the factors which are associated with the first you know, effect of malnutrition that is stunting so to define stunting it is where the height for a particular age is below minus 2 standard deviation that is called as moderate stunting or minus 3 standard deviation which is severe stunting as per the who standards this is stunting is something that has declined steadily since the 2000s but then we have a sustainable development goal to achieve in the year 2030 and to achieve that target we need to move faster we have to move at a faster pace so stunting overall if you see yes it has declined over the years the second one is wasting as you can see over here wasting is when the child or the person is too thin for their height so if wasting is not controlled over a period of time it can lead to death of the individual as well so the weight for height the weight that should be there for a particular height if it is below minus two uh, standard deviation or minus three standard deviation from the who average then that is what you call as a wasted individual or that is what is associated with wasting it can even vary with seasons it has been seen that in the pre-harvest season when there is food shortage and when there is heavy rain lot of diseases wasting is more however post the harvest season wasting is considerably reduced in certain population and certain countries so wasting is when the person is too thin for their particular uh, weight or for their for their the weight is too less for their particular height that is what we call as wasting the third one which is very commonly seen nowadays is obesity or being overweight so when the person is having excess weight in comparison to what they should be having that is what we call as overweight now the problem with overweight is that for our 2030 target we really need to reverse the trajectory because the condition is such that across the world obesity and being overweight and a lot of new lifestyle diseases have cropped up in populations which are overweight so we really need to work on this but these are the three common effects of malnutrition which are seen of course along with this we also have anemia anemia is very common amongst women who are in the reproductive age especially if we see the indian uh, you know national family health survey what is shown over here the nfhs survey the nfhs survey fifth one fourth one was done previously fifth one was done in the year 2019 to 21 it is the most recent one the sixth survey is going on so every three years usually india releases this survey and if you can see over here this is how the each of the malnourishment or malnutrition factors have been rated so we have stunting wasting we have severely wasted we have overweight individuals as you can see over here this is for children below five years of age so overweight has children has actually the percentage has increased earlier we used to have 2.1 percent of our population but now 3.4 percent of children below the year below five years of age are now overweight the same way if you see even anemia has increased amongst children who are below five it has you know it has become significantly worse if you can see and it shouldn't be happening so these are all certain factors or certain you know criteria which have been uh, surveyed which have been measured which have been checked for children who are below the age of five and it has been seen that most of this is actually increasing and the prevalence has in, in fact become more in 2012 world health organization identified six global nutrition targets which have to be achieved by the year 2025 these targets include as you can see over here 50 percent reduction of anemia among women who are in the reproductive age 30 percent reduction in low birth weight increase the you know rate of first six months exclusive breastfeeding up to at least 50 percent so the child should be breastfed in the first six months 40 percent reduction of stunting among the uh, you know children in the uh, children ensuring that five percent reduction and maintenance of under five wasting no increase in under five age overweight and seizing the increase in obesity and diabetes prevalence these are the six global nutrition targets which have been aimed for by the world health organization with respect to maternal infant and young child nutrition now these targets when we keep taking a report this is the report which has been taken in the year 2021 so this is the global nutrition report for india it has been revealed that out of the six global targets which i showed you earlier 
which you know to address the various issues like stunting wasting anemia low birth weight childhood obesity etc we are off track in five of them the main problem that has been identified is that in the indian diet there is a shift from eating whole balanced you know whole food based balanced meals to consuming more of sugary drinks ultra processed foods and processed red meat this is what is negatively impacting our uh, nutrition our health as well as the environment and india is also involved in this so it has been seen that the indian diet is low in fruits low in legume consumption nuts consumption and fish dairy products each of these are very very cr crucial these are the key foods which are crucial for the optimum growth optimum development and prevention of non communicable diseases so non communicable diseases include those which are you know not transferred from one person to the other they are due to the diet they are due to our lifestyle so non communicable in diseases include cardio cardiovascular diseases or diabetes these are some examples so we need to ensure that our nutrition is such that we are decreasing all of these uh, parameters and coming on to the global average so these are this is just to show you a comparison of the dietary intakes of the key nutrients and foods which are uh, present amongst adults aged 25 years and above and these are this is just to show you what is the minimum target what is the maximum target so it has been revealed that except for whole grains adult indians are not meeting the recommended dietary target for the essential food groups so this was a short video to discuss what is malnutrition and how india is also having a large or a vast percentage of our population which is malnourished amongst children and amongst the adults the there are some key indicators of malnutrition like stunting wasting obesity and anemia amongst others we have also looked at what are the six major global nutrition targets and a peek into the global nutrition report which was released in 2021 as well i hope this video was useful to all of you see you all in the next one as well bye